All right, let's get started on our cut and turn video. First off, we're going to look at what we're actually doing. The whole point of this is to grind off this weld and rotate the knuckles the correct way while at the same time getting your pinion angle set up correctly. Those are the two angles that are fighting each other. The caster angle and your pinion angle. So we have the axles are all torn down and now we need to do some measuring. In this example here we have the spring purchase set uh, perfectly level. And we have our angle finder set on the bottom of the knuckle and looking at it we can see that the knuckle is actually tipping forward at about four degrees which is terrible. That's four degrees of positive caster um, which will make it drive horribly. You want four to six degrees of negative caster uh, with the top of the the line of the knuckle tipping backwards. Um, that's what we want is negative. On this example over here we get about one or two degrees um, negative which is much better. Now it's time to make some sparks. Once you've got all your measurements done uh, and your axle is all torn down and cleaned up and ready to roll, time to grind off the knuckles. This is where you make uh, sparks and the dirt and dust and the grime. Uh, the key is to just keep grinding until you start to see the crack between the axle tube and the knuckle. Um, I use a four and a half inch grinder. I did my first ten or so before I knew what I was doing uh, with a four inch grinder. You could try a 7 inch grinder, but that might be too big to get in there and uh, get the angle ground out just right. Uh, wear your gloves, goggles, face shield, and so forth. I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you about proper personal protective equipment. Uh, don't blame me if you lose an eye. Alright, I'm going to uh, get grinding here, make some sparks. So we made our first pass of grinding. We ground out all the weld, all the way around the tube. Kind of just started to bevel in a little bit. Uh, the factory welds are super penetrating. Uh, you got to really hog into the uh, tube. Um, it looks a lot worse than it really is. You weld it all back full, uh, so you're not reducing the strength of the axle. Uh, the tube is also pretty thick as you can see so you're not uh, thinning it out dangerously. So after this we uh, take a few wax at it with a hammer and see how uh, it does. So we gave it a whack with the sawed off 8 pound sledge um, and you can barely, I'm sure it's invisible on the camera, you can see a hairline crack uh, in the weld tube knuckle joint uh, but I've only got like one inch of crack 
uh, just on the top where I started as I rotated around I got lazier apparently uh, and I'm getting no showing crack on the bottom half um, or anything around the sides so we grind more and you'll do this process on and off back and forth until um, you've got a crack showing all the way around So we ground some more, and we hammered some more, and now we're getting progress. You see the cracks starting to form all the way around. Need to get a little more ground out down here on the uh, underside, but the top side is totally free, and we're five minutes of grinding away from being in the clear. A little more grinding. A little more hammering, and we got it broke loose all the way around. You can see it's just cracking off the tube. You can see where we had to gouge in and get the weld that penetrated into the face of the tube and the face of the knuckle. That's the big curved arced area of the weld. It's a big fat weld, and we're free all the way around. Now you just got to ease it off. You don't want to hit it too hard. You don't want to bend the knuckle, although that would be pretty tough to do. Uh, you don't want to hit the top. Um, or the insides. So we'll hit the face here, the bottom, down there. And if you can, you can hit the the insides here where it's thick. And then once you get it off, you want to clean up uh, the surfaces and get ready to uh, put it back on at the right angle. Success! We got it off. You can see how much of the tube is in the knuckle. This is where the weld was. This is the knuckle we just busted off, the yoke, and uh, we just got to clean it up. Clean all this up here. You want to take it back quite a ways if you're welding on shock tabs, anything else. Uh, get it nice and shiny for welding. You want to clean up the tube, uh, knock down any burrs, anything on there. Uh, I actually switch up to a flap disc. Uh, my grinding wheel. This is my grinding wheel. It's almost done for. Uh, there's really not much left of it. Um, if you burn up an entire grinding wheel on one side, it's pretty typical. So I'm going to put a flap disc on, and I'm going to shine us all up, shine everything up, and get it lined back up to set my angle. So we've got everything shined up, cleaned up. Same goes for the uh, knuckle. We got the axle back uh, leveled up, squared up where we needed it. I totally cheat and use a bottle jack um, and I got my cordless drill rigged up to run it and you can get your degrees set pretty tight uh, raising and lowering it so then you just have to reinstall the knuckle to the same depth it was before uh, at a new angle and in this case we already know what angle we want so we're going to drive it right on there and hope we get it close. And once you get it on there, you can knock it back and forth a little bit to get it uh, dialed in. Um, but you want to be within a couple of degrees, degrees when you push it on there, because it can be a bugger to try to rotate it. Okay, so the axle is about ready. Got the knuckle pounder back on. The correct depth. We've got the angle finder dialed in to the exact same number as the other side. So we've got the uh, caster set. They match. And they're at the angle we determined we needed them at uh, when we did all the mock-up when it was still in the vehicle. And there's one more thing you want to check before you finish it up. Um, it's pretty tough to mess it up too badly. Uh, but the camber, which is kind of predetermined. I like to stick the level on face and put my angle finder on the uh, outside of that and make sure that they match side to side uh, as well. And there is a spec for that um, for every axle and it's uh, usually like eight degrees or seven and a half um, degrees. 
and you want to just make sure you're back within spec. And if you're not, you just tap the top or the bottom and move it in or out to change the angle a little bit. And you do have a little play in there uh, so you can get it dialed in. So we've checked our measurements 20 times, made sure both sides match. Um, now we're going to tack everything together on the one knuckle. And you want to do some pretty heavy tacks, it's pretty heavy material. Uh, and you want to uh, just weld carefully. So we've got it tacked on there pretty tight. Checked our measurements another half dozen times. Gave it a few little taps to make sure everything is good to go. And the next step is uh, welding it solid. You don't want to do this welding project as your first project ever. You don't want to learn how to weld on this kind of project. And you don't want to try your buddy's uh, 110 Harbor Freight welder or your Walmart special welder on this. You want to get a real welder, uh, 220 welder, you can stick weld it, you can MIG weld it, you can TIG weld it, you can do whatever you want, uh, but you need some serious amperage to get the job done correctly. Uh, you do not want to mess up on this one. So we've checked the caster and the camber once more. Make sure everything's good to go. And now we uh, burn the thing in. So we're all finished welding, we're all cleaned up, knuckle is permanently fused to the tube, both sides match, they both have come out at the same angle, plus or minus half or a quarter of a degree, that's about all you can expect when you heat them up and weld them on there tight, they will move a little no matter how hard you try, unless you have a super solid jig, and then it uh, you can get stuck in the jig if it's that tight of a jig. So now you are ready to put it back under the truck and get it lined up for uh, your shock tabs. And that is how we do a cut and turn here. Thanks.